course, where <clears throat> we have a dual nature of all the substance that makes up our universe. You know, light is a wave or it's a particle. And conversely, all matter is a particle or it's can be described in this quantum mechanic de Broglie wavelength. And what's going to happen is that DNA is going to start to come out as a very integral piece of humanity that serves as the gate, so to speak, between quantum wave type information and a particle existence. And so there's been a lot of really interesting studies done with DNA in labs recently. And so this phenomenon that I'm about to describe is called the phantom DNA effect. And you can go uh, look it up very easily on, on the internet and uh, find very credible uh, sources talking about this. And the idea is that we can take a strand of double helix DNA and we place it into a vacuum. And then we add photons, light particles, uh, to the vacuum as well. And what happens is the particles all take the shape of the DNA strand very quickly. So that the photons all align with the strand of DNA. And then what happens is we take the strand of DNA out of the vacuum and the photons stay held in the same shape as the DNA. And what this tells us is that light exchanges information with DNA on a quantum level. DNA understands the language of light, or understands light encoded information and is able to exchange information with that. And again, that's called the phantom DNA effect, and, and it's done in, in you know, hard science labs. Uh, there have been other experiments. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this one is called, but that they take laser light and they shine it through a salamander. And then they shine that laser light that's encoded with the DNA from the salamander into tadpoles. And those tadpoles who are supposed to grow up into frogs actually grow up into salamanders, meaning that the DNA can be carried through laser light to another being. Again, just another example that DNA understands the language of light, so to speak. Quantum wave information. DNA understands that. DNA is also what we call the building blocks of life. So it's also the makeup of our particle existence. And the idea behind DNA activation and using light codes is the idea that, you know, I bring light encoded information into your system. Light with very specific intentions behind it. And because DNA understands quantum wave light information, it takes that information in and then enacts a particle change through its fire letter sequences. And again, it's the idea that DNA is going to start to be sort of the godhead, so to speak, between quantum wave type information and a particle existence. And so it's basically the antenna within us that understands light and light encoded information. And so this is why DNA activation is so helpful and powerful, is because on a biological level, we are beings that have receptors called DNA that understand quantum wave type information that are also the building blocks of our whole existence. And so you can imagine that when we start dealing with people on a quantum wave type level and start enacting particle changes, it's a very powerful evolutionarily st evolution to step forward for humanity. And the idea that quantum mechanics even further enforces a lot of what us facilitators, our DNA facilitators, are doing. Because quantum mechanics tells us there's a fundamental lower limit to what we can know about a system. And the idea that at a very small m level, right on the quantum type level, when we want to make observations, we get restricted at a certain point, according to quantum mechanics. And it's the idea that 
Say we have a particle and we want to know where that particle is and how fast it's moving. We have to observe that particle. For us, observing something means bouncing light off of it, bouncing photons off of it. And you can imagine if the particle we're trying to gain information from is maybe like a, a soccer ball floating in a dark room so we can't see it. And to figure out where that soccer ball is or to figure out where that particle is, let's say we throw tennis balls into that dark room and we just throw a whole bunch of tennis balls. Well eventually some of those tennis balls are going to hit the soccer ball and they're going to bounce back and we're going to know where that soccer ball was because of how the tennis balls are bouncing back. Or in, our, in the case of quantum mechanics, you know we're looking at a particle and we're bouncing photons off of it, light, so we can look at it. Well, at that really small level, the idea that if we want to know all about where that soccer ball is and how fast it's moving and we bounce tennis balls off of it, well, the second we hit that soccer ball with a tennis ball, we know where its position is, but because of the size relativity between those two objects, well, hitting a soccer ball that's moving with a tennis ball affects its trajectory. So all of a sudden, the second we know where that tennis ball is, because of the nature of our needing to observe things by bouncing photons off of them, we then scramble the velocity. And similarly, you know, very small particles, if we want to know where they are and we're bouncing light off of them, at that small level, those photons actually affect what we're looking at. And so when we go to measure the velocity in the particle, the velocity in the position of a particle, the second we bounce photons off of it and we know its position, its velocity gets scrambled. And so that's the, uh, you know, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle within quantum mechanics. And, you know, taking it a step further, Einstein, who just despised quantum mechanics on a lot of different levels, he said, fooey to that, we can definitely know everything there is to know about a system. We'll take two particles and we'll fire them off at exactly the same forces and in exactly the same opposite angles. And then at a certain time, we'll measure the position of this one, oops, and the velocity of this one. And then we'll just exchange them because they're on the same trajectory with the same force, and we'll know everything there is to know about the system. No big deal, Einstein said. So what we did is we set up this experiment, and we shot two particles off at, this, at opposite same angles with the same forces. And then what we did is we measured the position of this one. And what happens is the velocity of this particle gets scrambled instantaneously. And this is across infinite amounts of space-time. This is not like, oh, they exchange information very quickly at the speed of light. This is actually an exchange of information across all infinite amounts of space-time instantaneously. Basically, the idea that those two particles can actually exchange information faster than our fabric of light. And the idea that at a certain zero point sort of position and energy, those particles are entangled and actually share a certain space-time existence. And so that when we're affecting one of those particles, the other one is intimately directly tied to it. Like it's not actually separate from it. And this is what's called quantum entanglement. And what quantum entanglement tells us is that particles can share information instantaneously across all amounts of space-time. And so what this does is this allows facilitators who are dealing with clients on a particle wave type engagement that I'm able to influence your light body and body from anywhere in the world instantaneously. And so, you know, for people who are interested in getting into some of this work, um, I've been starting to offer uh, group sessions where all, every month I'm going to take a group of about 12 people who desire to go through auric 
clearings, karmic clearings, J seal removals, and, and DNA activation of the full 12 strand DNA template, which you can check out some other videos um, in terms of what that is. And, and, and this video was, was designed a little bit to help people reconcile some of what's going on in this DNA world and what is actually allowed from our physics world. And the idea that they don't, they're not at odds with each other. They line up perfectly. And so I guess I just hope that this video helps people who, who have a scientifically engaged mind who are also very open to the shift that's going on on Earth. And the idea that they are not going to be separate and we are all going to move along together and there are going to be no giant logical holes where magical thinking is necessary to get over those gaps. Uh, this is all going to uh, be fine from a physics perspective at a certain point. And it should be noted again too that um, you know I'm not in labs right now doing experiments with any of this stuff. This is all my uh, understanding from information and, and experiments that are out there already. Um, but that there maybe will be a point when I will start to approach physics labs again and, and start to come up with some experiments that can help um, start to understand uh, what this DNA activation is really doing for people because it's just really wonderful and, and really amazing and um, you know I just I hope that this helps anybody who's um, interested in this work to, to begin to access it um, and have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, n namaste.